Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we conclude the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4, verse 1 today. Get your Bible if you can so that you can read along with me. The Bible is the most important thing in the world, so it's so important that you look at it, if possible, and read it with me as we study together. <clears throat> and speaking of studying together, you can do that anytime you want to with me at the Scripture Verse-by-Verse -verse website, and that's found at the Bible verse -by -verse com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going back over 36 years going through the entire Bible verse-by-verse. Verse. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Ruth 4, verse 1. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat down there. And, behold, the kinsmen of whom Boaz spoke came by, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside and sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. <clears throat> so one way or another, this issue with Boaz being able to marry Ruth is going to be settled. One way or another, Boaz wants to settle this issue as fast as he can. So he has a sit down with the other guy who has the right to marry Ruth even before he, Boaz, does. Look at verse 2. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. And they sat down. Well, the elders of the city, they were city officials and they were the judges. So this all has to be very official. It really was a legal thing, this kinsman redeemer law. Verse 3. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, sells a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. So the first step for a poor person like Naomi was to sell their property. If her fortunes did not change, she would then have to sell herself into indentured slavery. Verse 4, And I thought to advise you, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, redeem it. But if you will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides you and I am after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Boaz gave this man first choice because it was the right thing to do. Buy this land and give it to Ruth or give it to Naomi. That was his job as a kinsman redeemer. And so Boaz gave this man first choice. According to the rules, it was the right thing to do. And, of course, remember, Boaz and Ruth loved each other, <clears throat> but they loved God more. And as a result, they decide to play by the rules and trust God with the outcome. Boab, Moab, Boaz, I should say, and Ruth will have each other if it is what God wants. It'll work out. Five. Then said Boaz, The day you buy the field of the hand of Naomi, you must buy it also from Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead through his inheritance. He said yes to buying Naomi's land and then restoring it to her. But now he's told that if he redeems the land, then he must also marry Ruth and raise up an offspring in the name of her dead husband. 6. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem you my right to yourself, for I cannot redeem it. 
In other words, he would take the money out of the bank to buy Naomi's land and then give it back to her, but he's not willing to marry a widow. This man wanted to buy the land and then donate it to Naomi, which was nice, very nice. <clears throat> and also he would donate it to his her future heir. See. But the price got too high for this relative because he didn't love Ruth. When a person loves another person, then the price is never too high. No, Boaz perfectly willing to buy the land and then let that land stay in Naomi's family, be passed down to Ruth and whatever children that she might have in the name of her first husband, not in Boaz's name, but in the name of her first husband. Boaz was willing to do that because he loved Ruth, see. This fellow doesn't, and so he's not willing to do it. Seven, now this was the manner in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning exchanging. For to confirm all things, a man took off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for yourself. So he took off his shoe. <clears throat> in those days, if you wanted to transfer the right of purchase from yourself to someone else, then you would have to remove your sandal and give it to that person to make it official. Strange, isn't it? That's the way it was. Strange to our way of thinking, anyway. Nine, and Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, You are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was in Limelech's and all that was Chilean's and Malan's of the hand of Naomi. Boaz has restored the land that belonged to Naomi, and he has taken over the reins of that household officially. 10. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Mahan, Mahlan, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead through his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among the brethren and from the gate of this place. You are witnesses this day. And all the people that were at the gate and all the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that has come into your house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel. And may you do worthily in Ephrath and be famous in Beth and Bethlehem. So the elders here of the city, they are genuinely happy for Boaz. And so they pray that he'll have a great life with Ruth and his new family, that they'll be happy because he is happy. They are happy because he is happy. The Bible says that we are to rejoice when others rejoice and weep when others weep. 12. And let your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore unto Judah, of the children of the Lord, which the children of the Lord shall give you of this young woman. So they pray that God will give Boaz many important children. And boy, did they ever hit the bullseye with that prayer. You're not going to believe this one. But from the line of Boaz came King David. And then later, the Messiah from his human nature, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the things that we pray for may not be answered until after we die, but if it's in God's will, then we will eventually see the answer to our prayers. Even if we have to wait till eternity, we'll see them. 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. God gave Naomi what she had longed for. When a person lives for God, the Lord always manages to find a way of working things out for them. 
It may not be exactly what we want sometimes, but somehow, some way, God works through people or even through events to get us what he wants us to have, what is best for us long-term, spiritually speaking. We can always believe that. 15. And he shall be unto you a restorer of your life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. Naomi had waited a long time for a grandson, and she probably thought that it was hopeless given the circumstances of her life. No, it came to pass. When we are forced to live without something, then we really value it when we finally get it. Verse 17. And the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. And so we see from this that they gave birth to the great-great-grandfather of David. I think I counted that right. Interesting to me that they let the neighbors name the baby boy Obed. Ruth and Boaz were admired by the community. Everyone was excited about the good turn of events for this family. They were a popular couple. They were both godly. And they loved each other so much. It's fun to be around people like that. 18. Now these are the generations of Perez. Perez begat Hezron. Hezron begat Ram. Ram begat Aminadab. Aminadab begat Nashon. Nashon begat Salmon. Salmon begat Boaz. Boaz begot Obed, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. So look at this. Ruth, Boaz, and their son, and his offspring, are all in the Messianic line. And that's the reason why the book of Ruth is in the Bible. That's the reason why it's so important for Ruth and Boaz to get together. Because all this happened to keep the messianic line going. Remember back in Genesis, when we first started looking, not at Cain and Abel. Abel was dead, Cain went his own way. Not Adam and Eve, I don't know what happened to them, to be honest with you. We might see them in heaven, we might, might not. But Adam and Eve had another son, Seth. And I said at the time, God is going to pay special attention to Seth. And sure enough, his genealogy was given in Genesis, the genealogy of Seth. And, and that's because Seth was the beginning of the Messianic line. And it weaves its way all the way through Scripture. And it has come down to Ruth and Boaz and their son, Obed. And it will continue on right up until Jesus. The Messianic line, it can be traced from Adam all the way to Jesus. It just weaves itself through the Bible. That's what the Bible is concerned about. That's what God is concerned about. The Messianic line proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Well, we'll stop there. I hope you enjoyed this short book. And uh, appreciate you studying with me. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's Word. That makes you an immediate part of this ministry. And I'd appreciate that very much. And also, when you take a break from studying at the Bible verse by verse dot com, you can go to the front page and click the donate donate button. And prayerfully give us the Lord may lead. That's another way you can become a part of Scripture verse by verse. Until next time, thanks for studying with me. See you next time in First Samuel. Until then, so long everyone.